Fellas, we've just had a massive UFC lightweight main event with Armin Sarukin and Benil Darius. We also had a co-main event with uh, Jalen Turner and Bobby Green. And I'm thinking this is the perfect time to kind of match make the UFC lightweights. There's not much matches that are announced right now. There's only one or two that are rumored. So I'm going to be match making six fights in the lightweight division. All of them make sense. We're going to slowly be going down the rankings, but they're all going to be around the ranking area as well. I feel like this makes sense based on how well they're performing um, and a bunch of other factors as well. So you'll find out. Let me know if you agree, um, if I missed any fighters out, because like I said, I can only do six matchups or else this video will be going on forever, but that's 12 fighters I've used overall, so yeah, let me know what you think about the matchups, but the first fight, pretty much announced already, but I'm just going to include it, because why not? Islam versus Oliveira 2. Now, the one thing I will say is I probably would, now I'm 99% I'm certain they're going to book this next, but... I would, if I had to choose, I would have done Islam Makachev versus Justin Gaethje, purely for the fact that Justin Gaethje, he's going to have to wait ages for this fight. On top of that, Oliver did pull out against his last title fight. And I do want to see Islam against New Blood. I'm sick of seeing, seeing him against either Volkanovski or Oliveira. So I want to see Islam versus New Blood. But I'm not mad at this matchup. We get to see Oliveira go fight for the belt again. Maybe it's the Oliveira era. Who knows? But um, yeah, it's a fun matchup. Big rival. This is the biggest rivalry in the lightweight division right now. Not saying in terms of trash talk, but the fact that in UFC, there's two types of fans. There's the Oliveira fans, or there's the kind of the Dagestani Makachev fans. And it was a massive fight last time it happened. Do I think Oliveira beats him? No. Does Oliveira have the surprise factor and he's managed to beat a bunch of people that no one thought he could beat? Yes. This matchup's insane. Does need to happen. So I'm not going to spend too long talking about it because I think you already know why, but... I think this fight needs to happen. Pretty sure it's going to happen around early 2024. Probably UFC, after UFC 300, I assume. But uh, yeah, that's the first matchup. Next matchup, Armin Sarukin versus Poirier. Now, the only thing that's stopping this matchup that I can ever see... Well, the only thing I can like see this matchup not be made is because of Dustin Poirier. I don't think when he's just been knocked out by Justin Gaethje, he's going to want to fight a guy as dangerous as Armin Sarukian. But the issue without Armin Sarukian... Is he still, in my eyes, he's still one fight away from a title shot. Oliver is going to be fighting for the belt. Justin Gaethje is going to be the backup. I didn't mention it in the last um, in the last match, but the reason Justin Gaethje is not in this video is because I do think he should fight the winner of Oliver and Islam. But um, Armand Sarukian, unless he wants to wait like a year, he's not going to get a title shot soon. He needs one big fight against a big contender. And I think Poirier is the perfect guy. Pori has been out since July, just been knocked out. He's not really got any opponents. There's been a lot of people calling him out. This is a big fight for Poria. If Poria can beat Armin Sarukin, because Poria did say if he's not going to fight for the belt, honestly, there's no point in still fighting. If Poria can somehow get Armin Sarukin on his resume, Poria is only going to be like one fight away from a title shot. Maybe even he's going to get a title. No, he won't get a title shot from this, let's be honest. But Armin Sarukian, he can also still be the backup. But I feel like this fight's going to be amazing. We've got Poirier and Armin, one of the most entertaining fights in the lightweight division we can make. Uh, maybe Armin's just going to take him down, but who knows. But now this fight, it's, it's, it's a good contender for Armin Sarukian because who else is there? Gamrot's not going to fight him. He's already fought Gamrot. He lost to him. Doesn't really make sense to fight the guy that Benil Darius schooled the last time Benil Darius won a fight. So I think Poirier versus Armin Sarukian, if Poirier wants to do it, Let's get it on. If Armand wins this, get him a title shot, but he's still one fight away, and I feel like Poirier is the perfect contender. Stick it on a pay-per-view. Um, and yeah, Sarukin versus Poirier, banger fight. Next fight, Conor McGregor versus Chandler. Again, another fight that's kind of announced. A lot of people are saying they don't want to see this fight. They want to see McGregor versus Diaz or you know Chandler versus someone else. I feel like this fight has to happen now. We've had the build-up. We had the whole The Ultimate Fighter thing last year. Or was that this year? I think that was this year. Um, we had the whole Ultimate Fighter thing going on. We've just had a bunch of trash talk between them, this massive build-up, and it's just not been... It was supposed to be in December. Then it was supposed to be UFC 300. Now it's, we still don't have a date for this fight. I'm still not sure if it's ever going to happen, but I want to see this fight because people are underestimating McGregor, you know. Yes, he's a bit of a cockhead. He hasn't won a fight since the Cerrone fight, and he, has, he is on a two-fight losing streak. One of the fights, he got his leg broken. The other one, he got knocked out. But Chandler... Chandler's also equally as inconsistent. The guy's got some of the worst fight IQ in the UFC, and his only two wins in the UFC go to Dan Hooker and Tony Ferguson. Tony Ferguson hasn't won a fight in ages. He's on a six-fight losing streak. He's also been finished by Poirier. Perfect build-up, perfect fight, big main event for McGregor to come back. 
So, yeah, I want to see this fight in the lightweight division. If if Michael Chandler can get past McGregor and beat McGregor, listen, I don't know how long Chandler has in the game. He's getting pretty old. He's had a long career. I assume Chandler's just going to want to do what a lot of the other lightweights want to do and go for one last title run. If Chandler can get past Oliveira, honestly, he's probably going to be one fight away from a title shot. Same for McGregor, because the UFC are going to do everything they can to try and get McGregor a title shot. But Oliveira, not Oliveira, McGregor versus Chandler, big build-up needs to be booked i'm not sure when it's going to be booked but it needs to be booked i was thinking 300 but apparently not apparently mcgregor's injured now somehow but um yeah chandler versus mcgregor the fight we've all been waiting for for too long let's get it on next fight dan hooker versus rafael faziev this is such a good fight because rafael faziev is an absolute one of the most entertaining fighters in the lightweight division one of the best strikers his fight with justin gaethje his fight with dos anjos um faziev is extremely entertaining even the fight with bobby green he had he's just such an entertaining fighter dan hooker again his, his recent fights have looked amazing he had one of the best fights of the year against jalin turner where he just about got a win over turner beat claudio puelles but again claudio puelles isn't amazing even though he got destroyed he had a fun fight with arnold allen he's had Pori in the past as well that's a banger fight this would be an absolute banger fight i don't care if it's on like a, a pay-per-view in australia or if it's a fight night main event, I want to see Dan Hooker versus Rafael Faziev. The reason I've matched them up against each other as well is because they're both injured. Obviously, Rafael uh, Faziev got injured in the fight against Gamrot. I don't know the exact injury, but I think it was to do with his leg. Dan Hooker, um, again, he injured the same arm that he fought Jalen Turner with. So they're both going to be out for a while. So you can kind of build up on the whole, you know, comeback fight for both of them. They're both returning from an injury and fighting each other. So Dan Hooker and Faziev. Great fight. Not going to see this one for a while. We're probably going to have to wait until 2024. Probably going to have to wait longer for Faziev, if anything, because his injury did seem more severe. But let's see this fight. Like I said, main event for a fight night. Sticking on an Australian pay-per-view. Banger of a fight. This needs to happen. If Dan Hooker can get past Faziev, that's when we start talking about him versus the contenders. Same for Faziev, because te technically he didn't really lose to Gam. I mean, he did lose to Gamrot, but it was an injury. Gaethje fight was close. Still, I still have, you know, he's, he's not he's not washed his Faziev. So I want to see this fight immediately. Well, it's not going to happen immediately. We're going to have to wait ages. But let's talk about the guy that has beaten Faziev recently, Gamrot. I think Gamrot should fight the loser of Oliveira and Islam. Gamrot's in this really, really weird position where he's beaten, no, sorry, he's got schooled by Benil Dariush, but he's also beaten a lot of the contenders like Armand Sarukian, even though it was a close fight. Jalin Turner, he's just in this weird position, Gamrot, so I think he's one fight away from a title fight, he was close to getting a title shot at UFC 294, if Volkanovski didn't fight all, if Volkanovski didn't fight Islam, I'm pretty sure it would have been Gamrot, he was actually the, on paper the backup as well, they just didn't want to do it because of the name value, he deserves a title shot, but like I said, just not yet, he needs another fight, and I think he should fight the loser of Charles Oliveira and Islam Makachev. Um, I think he'd do great against him as well. Gamrot is not an easy opponent to beat. I think he'd do great against Islam and Oliveira. So I think the loser of that fight, they're probably going to take some time off. If Oliveira loses to Islam again, it's probably going to be one of those you know, things where Islam Makachev is Oliveira's kryptonite. And then Oliveira can go back to beating contenders. And what better contender to beat than Gamrot? Perfect fight for Gamrot. He's one fight away from a shot against a big name as well. Because even though he's not fighting for a belt... If you're fighting Charles Oliveira or Islam Makachev, it's going to be a big fight. So it's still a big opportunity. Could be a core main event, maybe even a, a main event for a non-pay-per-view. Who knows? But let's do Gamrot versus the loser of Oliveira and Islam. And if he can get past those, then we grant him a title shot. And again, on Oliveira and Islam's side, if they can get past a guy like Gamrot, they're not going to be far from a title shot either. In the final fight, Jalin Turner versus Benoit Saint-Denis. Um, yeah, Jalen Turner is an absolute killer. It might not show in his record because he has, you know, he's lost two very close fights with Gamrot and Dan Hooker, but he's, abs he's been on a finishing spree. Benoit Saint-Denis, I don't need to talk to you about this guy. Just watch the guy's fight highlights. He's absolutely insane. Very well-rounded. One of the most entertaining French fighters, not even just French, one of the most entertaining fighters in the UFC as well. That knockout he got over, over Matt Frafoller at UFC 295 was insane. People are saying Benoit Saint-Denis against Poirier. I can't see Poirier taking that fight. Um, I, I think we do Benoit Saint-Denis versus Jalen Turner. 
Both of them knockout artist finishing ability. It's almost guaranteed that there's going to be a finish in that fight. Jalen Turner's just come off a brutal, brutal knockout over Bobby Greed, partially due to the referee not stopping the fight, but it was still brutal. Also had a really, really close fight with Dan Hooker. Personally, I think Dan Hooker won, but some people thought Jalen Turner won the fight. Benoit St. Denis, he needs a big fight now, and Jalen Turner is the perfect kind of ticket to get to those big fights, because if he can beat Jalen Turner, then we can start seeing Benoit St. Denis against people like maybe Poriers of the division, or the Gamrots, or just a higher ranked guy, so I think we do Jalen Turner versus Benoit St. Denis, maybe a core main event for a French card, like a French fight night, I wouldn't mind seeing that, but yeah, banger fight. And yeah, this is the UFC lightweight division, the most entertaining lightweight, uh, most entertaining division in the UFC for me. And I've match made some of the fighters. Let me know your thoughts on these matchups. Do you agree or disagree? But um, thank you for watching.